Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Billy Lai. Uh, I'm from HS Hong Kong and responsible for business associated with um, various um, sustainability initiatives uh, from green health gas, uh, emission reductions, sustainable finance, uh, green finance, green buildings, and uh, supply chain uh, green health gas uh, management solutions. This is a live webinar uh, for those of you who would like to see the recording uh, of this session because you are so excited about what we are going to discuss. Uh, you will be able to see the recording on our YouTube channels uh, within a couple of days. Uh, just search for SGS, uh, Standard Chartered, and uh, Centali on, on YouTube uh, to find this uh, recording. And we hope we could answer some uh, questions from, uh, from the audience uh, because we have like a good number of people uh, in the call today. So please make sure you have your questions ready uh, as related to uh, today's topic. Um, you can put your, put your questions into the chat box. Uh, my team working in the back end will try to consolidate them and uh, we will put some of them uh, into our Q&A sessions. Uh, we have the great pleasure um, today to, to bring together Standard Chartered and uh, Centali uh, for the discussion on uh, how to decarbonize your buildings and assess uh, our green finance. Uh, I'm thrilled to have two great speakers with us today. Uh, we have Tracy Wong Harris, uh, the head of uh, Sustainable Finance Asia from Standard Chartered Bank. And uh, we have uh, Eleni uh, Polikoni Adu. I hope I got uh, Polikoni Adu right. <laughs> so it's the commercial director from, uh, from Santali. And uh, they are going to share with us on their thoughts regarding green buildings uh, and, and green finance uh, in, in a minute. Uh, the, the transition to a low carbon economy so requires substantial um, investment and uh, mobilizations of uh, financial resources. Uh, scaling up green finance is one of the key factors for delivering uh, on ambitious climate change uh, mitigation target. A well-functioning uh, financial system like what we have now in Hong Kong uh, have a clear focus on our sustainability and is capable uh, of channeling the lead funding uh, towards green, uh, green projects, uh, technologies, and, and research. Yet, uh, the lack of uh, clarity about uh, what activity uh, can be defined as green uh, sometimes bring the barrier to green finance and uh, developments. But this will not be the case uh, for today's uh, discussions, as uh, globally, uh, there are recognized green building certification system, um, which are independent tools that could showcase and benchmark the environmental, the environmental performance uh, of different buildings. The topics of today's discussion uh, will include an overview of uh, the green building market, uh, the speakers are going to give us an introduction to EDGE, uh, which is the Green Building Certification Program uh, launched by uh, international um, finance uh, corporations. They will also be telling you the financing model and options for facilitating uh, green building projects. And finally, the speaker will also share with us uh, some global case study uh, for our reference. Without any further delay, uh, hi, Eleni. Uh, may I ask you to be the first one to share your topics uh, and please introduce yourself uh, to the audience. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Billy, for the introduction. So my name is Eleni Polikunyadu, and I'm the commercial director at Sintali. Sintali is an environmental verification body, and we work alongside SGS as one of IC's global certification partners for EDGE. Now, Billy gave a really good introduction into the global context, so I won't belabor the point too much. But really, we're living in quite terrifying times. The climate crisis is around us. We're seeing global temperatures rise, weather patterns completely change, a very large amount of extreme weather events happening across the world and complete change of what the norms are. Now, all of these changes have led to many international negotiations around governments from across the world as to how we can really mitigate the impact and what we can do to address the climate crisis. There have been many, many commitments, all of them centering around what is known as the Paris Agreement, um, where 195 nations came together and agreed to try and limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. Now, despite commitments and corporate commitments and government commitments, we're still quite far off where we need to be in terms of really keeping the impact and the worst effects of climate change to the bare minimum. Now, when we think about climate change, typically people think about fossil fuels, they think about burning coal, they think about transportation. These are the typical sectors that come to mind when they think about greenhouse gas emissions and, and the impact of climate. One that doesn't typically come to mind is the built environment, but it should. 
So today's buildings generate over 20% of energy related greenhouse gas emissions and around consume around 40% of electricity globally. And that's not even including all of the impact of emissions from construction materials. Now, generally those carbon emissions are coming from the building sector, particularly in cities. So let's make this more specific. In Hong Kong, buildings account for 90% of the city's electricity usage and over 60% of Hong Kong's carbon emissions are attributable to generating electricity for the building sector. Now, within that 60%, typically air conditioning is the largest culprit, which makes sense as everyone's trying to cool their offices and homes. All of that is using energy and all of that energy is contributing to global greenhouse gas emissions. Commercial buildings tend to be the bigger culprit between commercial and residential in Hong Kong. So commercial buildings contributing to more than 75% of those total emissions and residential accounting for the rest. Now, clearly for Hong Kong, buildings are very, very important. And it's not just an issue in Hong Kong, but it is of absolute importance to really reduce that um, energy usage and reduce those greenhouse gas emissions for the particular sector. But reducing emissions isn't just an environmental component. There are many other drivers in the market that are really pushing companies, governments and organizations to really consider the built environment and really focus on greening buildings. First of all, on the legislative component. So at the end of last year, the government has announced the Hong Kong's Climate Action Plan for 2050. And in 2017, the government also announced the Hong Kong Climate Action Plan 2030 which set out certain decarbonization targets to reduce the carbon intensity by 65% or 70% by 2030. Now, part of this strategy included looking at the most important decarbonization sectors, which for Hong Kong are net zero electricity generation, as we've seen, there's a lot of electricity being used and that's really contributing to global greenhouse gas emissions. It's looking at energy savings. So how do we reduce the amount of energy that we're using, not only make it clean, green buildings, green transportation, and waste reduction. So overall on the green building side, it's about using less energy, making the energy being used green, and really thinking about how the infrastructure that we have in place, because we know that most of the buildings that exist today are going to be here in 2050. How can we make those greener and how can we reduce the, reduce the environmental impact? Now, while none of this is legally binding yet, there's a clear pattern and a trend towards more involvement from government and clearer legislation and a drive to really reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And so from an owner perspective or a developer perspective, anyone that's thinking ahead has to consider these changes, has to consider how the decisions being made today can reduce the risk moving forward from a legislative perspective and really make sure that companies are planning ahead for the changes that are coming. Because the reality is these changes are a one way street. The government, financial institutions, the world isn't gonna wake up tomorrow and say, we're not gonna be sustainable. We're not gonna move towards decarbonization. It's a one way pathway. And so companies need to get on board and need to get on board now. And it's not just the legislation that's changing. We're gonna hear very shortly from Tracy around what's happening in the finance industry but investors around the world and in Hong Kong are really paying attention to this transition to net zero and really focusing their funds and efforts to understanding the impact of investments, how investments are moving the needle towards decarbonization and creating specific pots and products, of, pots of money and products that are helping to really drive this decarbonization. But I won't go into too much detail, Tracy will cover that momentarily in her presentation. But the final driver is also consumers. And consumers can be both the public, but also other businesses for those working in the B2B sector. As more companies are setting sustainability targets and goals, there's sustainability procurement requirements. There are tenants that would only occupy green buildings. There's a lot of movement and a lot of demand for green solutions. So overall, the market is really pushing for green buildings. But of course, like with any business decision, it's not just about the market, it's also about understanding what the business case is for building green. And the good news is that the business case for green buildings is there and it's very strong. Now, there are multiple studies from around the world to really show the financial benefits to developers, occupiers and funders of green buildings. And it's been proven again and again that developers can command higher sales prices 
for green certified buildings. They can sell in quicker times. There's higher tenancy rates. The valuation of the building increases in some cases by 10%. And they can access better interest rates and interesting green financial products by having a green certified building. Now, I have the pleasure of working on green buildings across the globe. And in my experience, it's very rare for someone to stand up and say, disagree with all these comments, to disagree that green buildings are interesting or that there's a general market push towards green buildings. The real question tends to be, OK, we agree that all this is great, but how do you make it happen? And how do you make it happen in a cost effective way for your business, both in terms of time and in terms of effort? And that's really where Edge comes in. Edge was created by IFC, which is the private equity arm of the World Bank, and it was created for one key purpose, to enable mass market transformation. It comes with three components. The first is a free software tool, and when I say free, it is genuinely free. It is a software platform that you can go in and understand where your building is today and how you can improve it, and that can be used for new design and existing. There's a green building standard, and the standard is focused on resource efficiency. So that's energy efficiency, water efficiency, and the embodied energy and materials. And then there's a certification scheme. So really having that independent third party validation that a building is truly green and meeting certain criteria. Now, everything starts on the Edge app. The Edge app is this free software. And what's really interesting about it is that it's covering a lot of complicated energy modeling and a lot of work that would previously have been done in a black box without clear transparency and really making that accessible to everybody. So anyone can log in. You don't even need to create your own account and be able to see a baseline for your city. So for, in our case, you can see a baseline for Hong Kong for different typologies. And then you can select from a list of measures and see what you could do to your building to improve the efficiency profile of it. So what could you do to a building to make it more energy efficient? What could you do to make it more water efficient? And here's the best part. In addition to seeing what you can do, you also get very valuable data to be able to make strategic decisions. So what am I talking about? When you're thinking about making a building green, you don't only want to know what to do, but you want to know how much it's going to cost you and what your return on investment is. And that data is available through the Edge app. So you can see how to make your building green, how much it's going to cost you and what the business value is, what your utility savings will be, what your carbon savings will be. And you can use that to set out a plan, whether it's for a new building, for a new design or for a retrofit strategy. Now, all of that information is available on the Edge app for new and existing buildings and for every type of building. So it's a really powerful tool and really changing the way that people can access information about green buildings. Because you don't need specific expertise to be able to use the Edge app. You can go in and be able to use it and use that information. Now, for those going for certification, we move into the certification levels. So for a building to be Edge certified, it has to be at least 20% better across all three categories um, against the local baseline. So that means that your building has to be 20% better than the baseline for Hong Kong. And the baseline is built on local building regulations, climatic data, typical utility costs and industry practices for the region. Now, the first level is that 20% improvement across all three categories, but there's two more levels that are really important and are the steps towards zero carbon. So to get to zero carbon, a building must hit the edge advanced level, and that's looking at a 40% energy improvement over local baseline and at least 20 in the other two categories. And that's the prerequisite to reach zero carbon because we have to reduce the amount of energy that we're using before we can move into using renewable energy, clean energy, moving into offsetting, which is what happens in the zero carbon component. Edge Zero Carbon is looking at operational zero carbon, and it's using actual energy data from the buildings. I won't go into too much detail, but if you're interested or have any questions on that, please do put them in the Q&A chat. Now, I did mention that Edge is available for every kind of building, and this is a key part of the mission of Edge. Edge is about mass market transformation. So it's about getting every single building on this planet to be green, new, existing, homes, retail, supermarkets, hospitals, offices, schools, every building has the potential to be green. 
and Edge really makes that a reality. And so it can be used for any type of project. The certification process in and of itself is very streamlined. It is all done on the Edge app. So every assessment is done within the free software tool. Documentation can be uploaded directly in the software tool. And it goes through a process of an audit and then a certifier review. And the idea of that is to have that validation from independent parties, to have somebody going on site to be able to check, measure, make sure that the building is as we say it is, and then go through certification. Now, what's interesting with EDGE is that there's a preliminary certificate and a final certificate. And this can become really, really helpful for financing. And I'm sure Tracy will mention this later on. But what happens at preliminary stage is really this design stage. And it means that there's a certificate being issued for the design of a building. Now that can be done for a new building. So when you're designing a new building, you can certify that the design meets the edge standard. You can also do this for retrofit strategy. So for example, you have a building and you're designing your retrofit strategy to move it towards zero carbon. You can get your retrofit strategy design certified and you have that piece of paper that's been independently validated that you can then take to banks, for example, and access green finance because you're giving them assurance that what you're doing is meeting these international standards and it's meeting these general criteria to really move the needle and help decarbonize the built environment. That's happening at the preliminary stage. And then we have the final certificate post construction, which is once everything is done, the building is built, everything is in place, and then you can go for those, these uh, post construction certificates. Now, that's a very quick overview of Edge. So let's take a quick step back. Some of you might be familiar with other green building standards, certainly BEAM being the most predominant in the Hong Kong region. So the question that we always get and the question that's always important to answer is, well, why does Edge exist? And why should I look at Edge when I've been doing something else or when um, I'm thinking about uh, focusing on a different standard? Now, there are a few reasons why Edge brings additional value. The first one being scale. I'm going to keep hammering this point because I think it's so very important. Edge is about scale. Everything about it is about it being streamlined and a able to be applied across a portfolio of buildings. So when we're talking about edge, edge of course can be used on individual buildings, but edge is really compelling when you're talking about tens, hundreds, or even thousands of buildings. So I'm working with a client in Western Europe that has one project of 1,600 buildings that are all going through certification right now. That is scale. That is how we decarbonize the built environment. The second component is this accessibility element. So the Edge app is free and it's bringing all of this really valuable strategic information to a company's fingertips. And so all of a sudden, you don't have to go and get consultancy or you don't have to go find a green building expert to figure out what you should be doing and how much it's gonna cost you. All of that information is available to you and your team. And you can really start to build the business case and use the data strategically to make decisions. There's also a very clear road to net zero. Because of all the data that's available, you can really set out a pathway and cost it out and really look at that long-term strategy towards net zero and do it in a very quantifiable way because everything in Edge is about data. It's about numbers. It's about how do we quantify everything around green buildings and make it very tangible. So it's percentage improvements. It is utility savings. It is carbon savings. It is energy usage. Everything is very clear and quantifiable, which makes it so much easier to A, understand the value of green buildings, but also communicate it internally and externally. But let's come back to scale, because scale is really at the crux of what we're talking about. Now, when we started at the beginning of this presentation, we talked about the climate crisis, and we know that the climate crisis needs big solutions. Now, up until now, green buildings have been a single building. Right, They've been the one green office or one green shopping mall or a very beautiful flagship building. But to reach net zero, to really make decarbonization actually happen, we need to scale. We need to be able to tackle every single building and really transform the built environment on scale and really think about every type of building, whether they are the really high value buildings or your typical building. 
every building has the potential to be green and can actually be made green using edge and using the portfolio approach. So how does that work? Well, remember that edge is a certification scheme, but it's also a strategic tool. And that's really the key differentiator and what's really important for you as you think about how you're going to go on this decarbonization journey and how you're going to make this happen. There are four stages. They're all quite simple and edge helps you along the way. You'll see that the edge certification actually isn't a stage, but it's really used throughout your process to validate you, to really bring that independent validation of progress over time. But the first step is to understand where you are today. So look at your portfolio of buildings. Take all of the assets that you have, assets that you occupy, assets that you own, assets that you're looking to develop, and put them in the Edge app and see where you are compared to a local baseline. It's available to you and it very quickly can give you a sense of whether you have buildings that are exceeding current building regulations or would require work. Now from there, you can really start to use the Edge app and identify where your opportunities are for improvement. So right now I'm taking an assumption that this is a portfolio of existing buildings because most of Hong Kong is built already. Um, if you use the Edge app, you can identify where you can improve and then start to build the business case and how much money you're going to need for that refurbishment strategy at scale. So of course, when you can aggregate assets, you can first of all create a much more compelling deal that you can then take to a financier like Standard Chartered, but also you can find efficiencies of scale. So if you look at your 50 assets and figure out that most of them need an improvement of the air conditioning units or your LED lights, you can then do an order at scale, find efficiencies of scale and be able to implement something in a much more cost effective way than if you were going to look at each asset individually. Once you have your plan, you can lay it out. You can figure out over time how you're going to break down the costs and move towards your end goal. You might find that actually there's a couple of low hanging fruit that are going to give you some quick wins, which is always helpful when you're trying to build buy in internally. You can set that out, do those first, put less cost and build up the capex that you need to be able to then move into the bigger efforts and ultimately move towards decarbonizing your portfolio of buildings. It doesn't happen overnight, but really starting to think about how you can look at your assets as a whole how you can take a portfolio approach and slowly shift it towards net zero, which is where everybody needs to go. Now, I'm going to end with just a couple of case studies of what's happening around the world. As I mentioned, I have the joy of working on green buildings globally. We're currently in over 75 countries. So just a little snapshot of how EDGE is being used around the world. First of all, in, in your backyard uh, with uh, Langham Mall that was certified in December of 21 the first EDGE certified mall in Hong Kong. Um, this is actually a dual certified property. So we do have clients that choose to go both for a local green building standard as well as an international because they gain additional value by having both the locally recognized tool as well as something that's more internationally focused, particularly when attracting international tenants or looking for green financing. Having that international certification is very, very helpful. Um, and also the quantification can really help show um, a company's sustainability commitments. Jumping across to the Philippines, uh, this is an example of a client that actually used Edge to develop a retrofit strategy and certify the retrofit strategy to move towards zero carbon. So this is a combination of seven different offices by one uh, developer. They're coming together, they figured out what they need to do using the Edge app, and they've gone for a preliminary certificate of the retrofit strategy. And they now have two years to go for this and move towards uh, really meeting that Edge advanced um, requirements and the zero carbon certification. And finally, shifting over to Europe, uh, a quick example of another portfolio. Uh, this is a warehouse portfolio in Romania where the client had 45 warehouses. Uh, these were actually certified in less than six months, um, which gives you a sense of how streamlined the process is and how you can really decarbonize at scale in a cost effective and time effective way. For this particular client, they actually leveraged the EDGE certification to be able to access over 300 million in uh, financing 
And the financing wasn't to specifically improve the product, but also um, for corporate expansion. So really using the certificates to leverage finance opportunities um, and uh, really be able to drive growth for the company. Now, with that, I'm going to end my section and pass it on uh, to Tracy, who's going to talk a little bit more about the financing side and how um, the green financing ties well with green building certification, but particularly with EDGE. Thank you, Yuanani, for a great presentation. Uh, I saw some questions start coming in uh, publicly and uh, privately. Uh, so we are going to take it um, during our Q&A sessions. Um, China has committed to hit the peak of our carbon emission by 2030 and uh, become carbon neutral by 2060. As Anthony mentioned, so we have the Climate Action Plan uh, 2050 in Hong Kong. Uh, in order to achieve the objective, the Hong Kong government has implemented a number of actions, such as to increase the use of renewable energies, um, seeking investors to precipitate and operate zero carbon uh, energy projects in, in Hong Kong, and to accelerate the development of uh, green and sustainable finance in Hong Kong in order to develop Hong Kong into the green finance hubs uh, of the regions. Um, hi, Tracy. Uh, the audience will be interested to know the financing model and faci for, for facilitating the green building projects. And uh, please also introduce yourself to our audience. Sure. Thank you, Billy. And uh, it's always great hearing from Anani. I always learn something new every time I listen to her. So thank you. I enjoy that. And good day, everyone. My name is Tracy Wong Harris. Sustainable Finance Head for Asia at Standard Charter. And I am also the Vice President and Deputy Secretary General of the Hong Kong Green Finance Association. Delighted to be here uh, with you today, speaking to a topic that close to my heart on green buildings. So let's take a look at the market, at the overall growth of the sustainable finance market in the past few years. As you can see, um, the market has gone going through a tremendous growth. Look at 2021 last year, the overall market doubled uh, compared to the year before. And with, um, um, with um, Asia uh, growth um, close to three times at the bottom of the chart. And if you look at the uh, what product is driving the market, you can see that green bond is still dominating the market, contributing to over a third. But we have seen tremendous pickup in sustainability link loan product, which, uh, which are contributing to over a quarter in, in over the very short space of uh, development in the past two, three years. Now, taking a deeper look in the real estate industry market, um, per se, you can see that it follow also very strong growth as of the overall market. And um, with the US and Europe contributing to over a third and with Asia close to a quarter of the market, um, of, of a quarter of the market, that's right. And then again, looking at the products, what are, what are the typical sustainable finance products are being used in the real estate market? As you can see, again, um, green, Bond uh, contributing to over 40% with green loan 11%. What that means is use of posit based product is contributing to over half of the market. Again, um, picking up a strong pickup and fast growth of the sustainability link loan market uh, in 2021, contributing to almost 40% of it. Now, um, uh, Anneli, um, um, basically, gave us the climate crisis, the start, um, the presentation. And here it come with opportunities. So um, based on the IFC World Bank's estimates, um, the green building market present a 25 trillion US dollar opportunity by 2030 with 18 trillion in uh, Asia. By, um, so this is enormous amounts of opportunity in the, in the green building market. And um, um, since we're speaking and hosting this uh, in Hong Kong, so take a, take a deeper look in the Hong Kong green bond market in 2020, over, uh, 30, over a third of the market are the use of proceeds are um, contributing from the building sectors as well. So very um, aligned with um, what uh, uh, analysts share earlier. Now, taking a look at the thematic, so the green uh, boxes highlighted on, um, I call this from green to rainbow. So the market has moved from 
green to social to sustainability, which is just a combination of the green and social, and then transition market. And these uh, four categories are use of post-seed uh, base. And with the new, uh, um, um, newly um, very strong growth market from the sustainability link, it can be linked to bond and loan products, which deviate from the use of post-seed. Um, 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 market where the uh, use of where the uh, product can be um, applied to working capital and also the margins meaning that the interest payout tied to the performance of the borrowers of the predetermined kpi so let's take a look of how these are being used in the um in the um in the case studies an example now, we talk about use of proceeds. So the top chart I highlighted are uh, typically green social sustainability bond loans uh, market. Uh, in the building sectors, the typical uh, category are renewable energy, energy efficiency, which um, Anneli already mentioned. And in particular, I highlighted in the bottom, you see the green building. So what is considered green building? This is where green building certification come into place to um, uh, qualify. So I talk a little bit more in my my next slide. But before moving away from the environmental uh, market side, I also want to highlight from the social. So even uh, in the social category, affordable housing, um, which contribute in the social uh, uh, projects, use of proceed, also relating to the building sectors as well. Now, taking a deeper look, I mentioned green building certifications. Now, we have seen a number of green building certification being developed across the globe with local, a lot of them are locally developed and a few of them are being adopted internationally. So um, in Hong Kong, uh, we see BIM Plus, which we, um, we have already mentioned earlier. And in China, we have the um, China Green Building Council. And um, um, in Europe, we see BRIAMS very typically used. And across of all these, the more internationally adopt being used widely are LEED developed from the US and also EDGE, the IFC tool being adopted in internationally. Um, looking at the right hand side, I want to dive deeper into about um, um, how, how this green building is certification in the energy aspect, because we talk about decarbonization, we talk about net zero. So um, how does all these different um, green building certification serve the purpose of from the energy aspect from the decarbonization perspective. So um, a report that was done uh, by 20, Hong Kong 2050s, now Hong Kong GFA uh, collaborations with a number of, uh, um, of um, research house that has published this report and benchmarking eight green building certification. And as you can see, the energy aspects in as part of the overall certifications uh, degree on the far right you can see that edge um, because as um, um, Annalie has mentioned with edge is free um, um, aspect that is being measured with um, um, energy, water, and unbody carbon. So that is highly of um, contributing from the energy aspect of the overall um, rating. And also in, we also seen a, a neighbors, which is I think one of the questions um, popped up earlier, uh, mentioning the Australia market in neighbors. So that is 100% pure energy um, certification uh, locally being adopted in Australia market. Now the bottom uh, chart, I think is important to highlight. We talk about pathway. So whether this certification has a uh, clear decarbonization pathway that can demonstrate the um, uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, um, um, uh, aspect. So with this that we can see that in edge is, um, and also um, in the neighbor market are the two that actually um, um, highlighting the decarbonization pathway of, of this aspect, which is very important, I think, that we are more and more increasingly talking about decarbonization. So the application of such that um, I think is important to uh, be highlighted. Now, 
talking about all the uh, advantage on IFC Edge that being recognized. Um, so I want, I'm delighted to share with you that um, Standard Charter have signed an MOU um, where our client can enjoy complimentary technical support from our Sintani and GS, SGS team helping our client uh, for the certification, the Edge certification process. So. Um, Feel free to reach out to either like our, our bank, any bankers of um, as Standard Charter, as uh, Sutani, and as SGS to find out more. These are the additional support that to um, help our client the know how about how do we go through this certification to help you to be um, with the whole decarbonization process of your building uh, stock. Now, coming on to some uh, uh, financing case study that we adopt. Um, so uh, this example in front of us is a um, investor purchasing an existing industrial building and going through green retrofit uh, to convert it to data center. And with this, we use edge certification to um, 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 help to qualify the green acquisition. So green financing for this acquisition. And as you can see, um, the investor demographic is very wide of, um, um, on a mixture of uh, uh, diversifications achieved from, from this. And then on the right hand side, you can see this building alone achieved 36% of the energy saving, 24% on water saving, and 66% and body carbon. These are very important, I think. Um, I will share more in the next case study, but to be able to see how much the um, green retrofitting or the certification um, uh, can demonstrate the achievement of these three aspects, I think is a very important uh, consideration when you're going through the green building certification. Now, another um, structure that um, um, we just closed uh, coming to the market. So um, this is a new structure how we um, um, apply on sustainability link loan. Um, so the, the facility is a um, syndication loan facility where um, the client is going through a retrofitting of an existing building. So how are we using green building certification to for the sustainability link loan structure? So the first KPI, um, key performance indicator, we using Edge as the first step on achieving and demonstrate the 20% energy uh, efficiency. And then subsequently, every year during the retrofit uh, of uh, the work that going to be done, every year we measure and we audit and certify uh, using Edge tool to demonstrate the incremental green retrofitting benefit during the terms of the loan. So this again um, is, um, is a, as um, mentioned earlier, a very powerful way to um, apply and demonstrate that energy if improvement over the terms of the loan. And this is one of the key aspects that we're looking for. And because um, Edge is benchmarked by the 20% improvement to the local stock of the building. So this is another advantage when we look at um, um, how ambitious is your KPI? How, um, and how does compare to the local stock in your location? Because this, the baseline will vary between city to city, country to country. So the advantage of um, demonstrating your building um, uh, compared to your peer uh, in the similar type of building in your market. So, um, so this is a um, um, new structure that we applied uh, using Edge in the SLL KPI. And the second one, I also want to mention, this um, client also go through the local building certification as well, and they are going through an improvement. So they were um, um, on during the terms of the loan, they will improve the rating of the local green building certification as one of the achievements on this KPI as well. Now, going, we, so we, I share a lot about how we're helping our clients and also how we leverage our IFC Edge tool and our expertise from, um, from SGS, from uh, Sutani is about the technical help that we get to help our client. We didn't stop there. So as standard charter, we also um, use 
edge to certify our building. So in Hong Kong, um, we just certify our um, uh, one of our green branch that in uh, in central, which we achieve thirty five percent of energy saving, twenty percent water saving, and seventy five percent in embodied carbon. And we will go through the full zero carbon building certification process. So we are now moving from the baseline twenty percent, and we are heading to the second stage, which is forty percent of energy improvement and eventually we will we will aim and aspire for having a zero carbon building in Hong Kong in as our offices and the building that I'm in today I wish I didn't flash out is also um, um, green building uh, edge certified so um, we are not so with the commitments helping our client to um, net, uh, finance net zero by 2050 with very clear 2030 goal and our own operational net zero by 2025 as well. So with that, I think that um, I see a lot of questions coming through. So I will pass the microphone back to Billy and um, let's take some questions with Eleni together. Thank you so much, Tracy, for the, uh, for the summary. Uh, now time to answer some questions from the floor. Uh, just give me a second. Thank you, Kelly, for uh, summarizing the question for me. I think the first uh, couple one will be for uh, Eleni. Um, uh, how did uh, Edge work with Labor and uh, Green Star rating in Australia? I think it also mentioned in uh, in Chase's presentation, Eleni. Absolutely. So Edge is another green building standard um, alongside Neighbors and Green Star. So I think the key differences are, as uh, Tracy mentioned, typically tend to be the local internet versus global international. Neighbors obviously exist in other as well, uh, though most common in Australia and the UK. Um, Edge as a as a green tool and certification scheme is unique in a couple of different ways. One is that it was actually designed to be global by nature, um, which is quite rare in a green building certification scheme. So typically a green building uh, standard is developed for a specific country and then it becomes international. So similarly to how LEED started in the US and is now an international standard, BREAM started in the UK and is now an international standard. EDGE was designed to be global from the beginning. Um, and it takes this global methodology, the energy modeling using ASHRAE, it follows the same energy modeling principles as EPC ratings, um, but it has that local context. So it's giving a global way to compare and to be able to assess buildings around the world, whilst also taking into account the local context. Um, so some clients may choose Edge over Neighbors or Green Star. Others, like Tracy mentioned, go for dual certification because there are actual benefits to going for multiple certification schemes, given the different focus areas as well. So Edge is focused exclusively on resource efficiency. So energy efficiency, water efficiency, and energy insurance. So in some cases, it's actually also very beneficial and complementary to add an additional certification scheme that covers something different. So for example, Edge and Well go beautifully together because Well is so focused on well-being and health and just looking at those elements and Edge is so focused on environment. So by doing both, you have two international schemes that actually really build um, towards one another. So depends on the specific use case um, that technically in the similar realm of a green building certification scheme, but there are often advantages of going for dual certification. Thank you. Uh, another one for you, I think you uh, give a short answer in the chat room. Uh, did Grabsby recognize or use uh, Edge? Could you further elaborate it? Yeah, I, I popped that in the chat because so I was like, it's a good yep, question. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, Grabsby does recognize Edge um, amongst its list of uh, green building certifications. Okay. Okay. Uh, another one for you is uh, how are the local baseline being calculated uh, based on measurement? Um, are they certified in any way? I think the audience said, uh, are they are they come from certified buildings or not? Benchmark isn't a benchmark of certified edge buildings. The benchmark is actually a baseline looking at local building codes and building regulations in the region. So it's taking what are the actual requirements in Hong Kong? How would you be building a building today? What are your requirements? Taking into account climatic data for the energy modeling component, taking into account all the regional data that influences that and saying, if you were going to build, for example, an office today, that's what your baseline is. And then it's saying, because we're trying to decarbonize, we need it to be better than that. We need to go above what government regulation is mandating and we need to move the needle towards zero carbon. Now that becomes challenging 
when you're looking at existing buildings. Because at existing buildings, your baseline is not the building codes when you built the building, it's your building codes today. And so if you have a building that's 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, you have to bring it up to at least as what it would have done if you had built it today, plus more. Difficult, but so important. Because again, most of the buildings that we have today are still going to be here in 2050. And if we were only trying to improve them 20% compared to when they were built, we wouldn't really be making a huge difference in terms of the carbon impact, in terms of sustainability. So it can be quite challenging for existing buildings. And I think Tracy had a, you know, definitely saw it live because, you know, they did it. They didn't just create a financial product. They also walked the talk and made it happen for themselves. And they saw the challenges, but also the opportunities of what happens when you look at existing buildings. Thank you. Tracy smiling. <laughs> It's not wow. easy. The building <laughs> we're in is super, like, at least the one I'm in is super old. <laughs> uh, Tracy, the next couple of ones go to you. Um, can you please clarify uh, how does uh, sustainable link loan work and related pricing? Sure. So a uh, very good question. So um, let me uh, take a step back as well. So uh, comparing what is use of proceed and sustainability link pricing differences. So use of proceed, the typical that the green loans, green bond, um, in this use of proceed market, we are now seeing no pricing differences. So you should expect similar price, traditional and green product in this perspective. The market is well developed in this space already. And then on um, sustainability link, product however the pricing there is margin benefit and penalty associated to how depends on how the borrower um, um, perform so and there's also a differences between the european market and asia market so sustainability link loan in europe are uh, the pricing the interest rate is tied to both way normally um, and if you achieve certain uh, the predefined uh, kpi and target then you get get the benefits. So every year, you if you are telling me uh, if the loan is structured and you agree that every year I will I will do the 20% improvement and then 25 and then 30, so forth and so on during the terms of a loan. And every year you need to bring in your 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 scorecard and results to the to the lender and say, I I done it. So if you achieve those and those need to be externally verified. And for that, and that's why green building certification is useful because all green building certification are considered externally independently that are verified. So in that, going back to the sustainability link loan case, so you present your certificate every year, um, or, um, and then if you achieve this target, then you get a uh, pricing uh, benefit, um, some discount in your interest rate. However, on the other side, if you don't, then you have to pay a penalty. And that is typical uh, outside of Asia, uh, European markets. However, in the Asia uh, market, um, the sustainability link loan market is typically still one-sided. So if you achieve those targets, you get a pricing benefit, but the market, um, uh, but a penalty structure are not typically associated to it as yet. However, in over the last few years, we have seen the pickup in this space as well. And um, um, just to mention a more forward-looking structure. So um, last year, very proud that we have structured a sustainability link loan for a private equity firm across different KPI and the penalty associated to it is by purchasing carbon credit. So that is another structure instead of mirroring on the interest rate. And another, another format is, you know, purchasing carbon credit and you have to advertise those credit if you uh, don't achieve certain target. So this is the typical differences between use of proceed and sustainability link structure and the pricing of the link structure uh, depending on how you as a borrower perform to help you to stretch and deliver those ambitions uh, target for your sustainability um, um, strategy. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, the next one for you is, uh, does uh, green financing, uh, meaning easier borrowing and lower interest rate, uh, what are the benefits for the, for the borrowers? Yeah, so I think I answered the questions in terms of the, uh, the pricing side, but about the benefit. So um, as one of my slides earlier, we have typically seen that um, stronger demand 
um, and you know, typically um, the um, green or you know uh, labeled uh, ESG bond per se are oversubscribed in the market, and and this is overly uh, increasing. So, um, and then also the increase in um, investor diversification diversity as well, because you attract uh, a bigger uh, group of investor that actually zoom in our focus in ESG sustainability uh, per se. And last but not least. It also helped the borrower to articulate their own sustainability strategy and their decarbonization journey as well. So I think these are the associated benefit in addition to um, the pricing that I mentioned. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one for you. What do banks uh, pay attention to when approving uh, green loans? For example, the loan amount, the loan type, terms or loan purpose? Um, very good questions. So the purpose, so as I mentioned, uh, really what financial product and structure that you use is really depends the pur purpose. What are you borrowing that money for? So is it use of proceed that you're borrowing particular project? Ring fence, I am invested in a renewable or I am purchasing that building that I want to qualify green. So ring fence use of proceed project base or actually serving a working capital purposes where I am borrowing that um, uh, for working capital However, to tie that to a sustainability ang angle is again using sustainability link to um, and linking to your own corporate or your group or your company uh, sustainability strategy and uh, and that energy efficiency and um, uh, improvement if your building stock can be one uh, feature of it. So the purpose is one. And also the ring fence. So the ring fence of like when you say you're using that money for X, Y, Z, we need to have safeguard uh, in place on how do we, if it's, um, so on what project you're using, the evaluations of uh, the projects or KPI per se, the target, and also with the reporting and um, management, how you use the money and the reporting associated to it and to make sure that uh, to avoid get into uh, the greenwashing area. And again, um, what we are, uh, what is beneficial to the studio structure is having that external independent um, uh, certifications um, and, and according to um, the sustainability link principle the target need to be all the target need to be externally um, um, certified and validated I think one of the nice things with with the green building certificate is that you are very clearly meeting the requirements of what your bank is asking for and gaining additional business benefit because you, there are business benefits as we talked about to having a green building certificate. So it's kind of killing two birds with one stone that you're able to, to really make the bank's life easier, your life easier, win those benefits, et cetera. Um, so it kind of is a nice, uh, a nice example. And also just coming back to Edge, Edge can provide a lot of the information that Tracy just mentioned, right? So the reporting, the clear impact, um, really clear targets and the KPIs because it's all quantifiable. It all sort of melds together into um, just really making it as streamlined and straightforward as possible to access the financing that you need to be able to do the developments or expansions or improvements of decarbonization that you need um, in a clear, simple and cost effective way. Tracy, I got a follow up questions on uh, sustainable link loans. I want to pick that up first. Um, is there a specific specific minimum rating requirement uh, to qualify for sustainable link loan or the baseline for improvement um, for, on the current specification of the buildings? So when uh, the KPI, the, um, so the um, uh, key performance indicator being set and the target, um, so there are two things that we look at. One is how, um, whether that those KPI are material to the company. So it has to be material and meaningful to the company. Secondly, is when you look at those targets. So you look at the historical performance of the company and what are they setting for the future, that ambitionness compared to their own company. And, and then those targets will be compared to their peer group. So in that um, building sector, let's say in, 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 in um, commercial real estate. So this compared to all their peer in that category, in that sector, in that segment. And um, finally, also internationally. So regional and also international standards. So all these are being compared and assessed on uh, how ambitious those target they are being set for. And typically we also, um, um, 
um, um, use a second party opinion to have independent opinion on the structure that we uh, we do for the transaction as well. Um, so two things um, of the target setting, meaningful material and tap on the target, whether it's ambitious and using SPO uh, on the structure, have an independent experience. And subsequently, every year, those targets need to be externally validated. So these are the sequence and, and um, a key feature for sustainability link learn. Thank you, Tracy. Eleni, a couple of questions for you. Um, can, the, can the utility bill saving alone justify the uh, extra construction costs required in uh, building those green features to comply with edge requirements or decarbonization is a mandatory, is a mandatory trend? I think it depends. Um, it's definitely very easy on a new build. So when you're designing something from scratch and you integrate the green from the beginning, you can absolutely save the, the extra cost of construction. I think it's estimated to be less than 1%. Um, through utility savings and in some cases because it was designed with this in mind the, the incremental cost um, or additional cost is really minuscule now on retrofit it tends to be a different story because it really depends on what state the building is in how old it is how it was designed from the beginning and what level of changes you need to make the utility savings and also the cost of energy right um you know we're obviously living in a time where we're seeing globally energy prices are spiking around um, and is there, there is a question and a much, much bigger conversation now around energy efficiency and simply using less energy is beneficial in every in every step of the way, whether it's looking at your, you know, your utility costs or looking at the environment or looking at energy independence. Um, so for retrofit, it's a little bit hazier and it tends to take a longer time to pay off. Um, so it, then it does tap into a little bit of a second component, which is, you know, there is there is the trend. But also, again, I think one of the things that's not really talked about on the retrofit market that's super important is risk. So if legislation changes, which it will, um, you run the risk of having an obsolete asset. So an asset that you can't sell, you can't rent, you can't do anything with. And you just have something there that's completely draining resources because it's not meeting minimum legislative requirements because it's not sellable, it's not lettable. And so accounting for that risk when you're doing and looking at the costs is super, super important because that is then making a more um, level playing field when looking at the upfront cost of making the retrofit versus the long-term payoff and the cost in addition to the utility savings. Thank you. Um, the next one will be, how would the uh, edge be different from other green building initiative in the market? I think we've covered this a little bit. I can, I can <laughs> maybe, maybe start, then I'll, I'll pass on to Tracy as a perhaps less biased uh, <laughs> opinion than mine. Um, but I think edge, edge is different in terms of the scalability of it. It was everything about it in terms of the time that you need to do it, the cost that you need to actually implement and get a certificate um, is about scale and also the edge application. So that is quite different than other green building standards because it's actually possible to look at a thousand units at a time, a thousand buildings. Whereas anyone perhaps who's had experience with other green building standards might be thinking, oh my goodness, a thousand buildings, that's gonna cost me a hundred million of like certification fees and it's gonna take me 50 years to do. Um, you know, it's actually possible both in terms of time and cost um, with Edge. And then again, the quantifiable element and the free software tool being really a strategic decision making tool to make better cost effective decisions, really understand what you need to do, how much it's going to cost you and how to start making those incremental improvements. And I think it ties really well to the conversation around the sustainability linked loans, because it's it's also a change in mindset, I think, for green buildings. Perhaps in the past we said, okay, it's certified green, done, not touching it again. But actually that's not the case. We have to be constantly improving because we have to be really looking at reducing the energy, really looking at moving towards zero carbon. And that's not a tick box exercise. That's a long-term improvement process and Edge is quite well suited for that. But Tracy, I don't know if you have other, other thoughts on this. 
You got it well covered, but I just highlight that quantifiable measure is very important because we actually see the number on the certificate, what exactly that is, and that decarbonization pathway as well, how I can continue to improve and that energy efficiency over time to eventually to arrive to uh, carbon zero. And this is what we are all committed to uh, in the net zero target one way or other. I'm going to take uh, just a couple more questions um, from, from the audience. Um, if we want to use the loan uh, to uh, help achieve edge uh, certifications for my properties, can we use this green project as a green loan, Jay-Z? Absolutely. That is the low hanging fruit that you can do. You want to, um, you want to certify your building green using edge and that qualify. Okay. Um, the last one I want to ask is how important is uh, this international green building certificate to, to you as a bank? What confidence did it give you when you do uh, making investments? Is, is important that is um, um, we do accept a number of green building certification, local standard and international standard. However, the decisions from uh, per, perhaps from the financing uh, perspective is from the investor. Who are you selling this to? Who's your audience? Are you, are you looking for that international investor market? Um, so using an internationally recognized green building certification, you have the benefit that because they already know what that is as opposed to the local green building certification. So I would say that is um, um, more from the investor uh, segment that you are going after from the borrower's perspective. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, uh, unfortunately, this is the end of our time together. Uh, we really appreciate everyone for perspicuating, uh, typing in your questions and for listening. Hopefully you find this session insightful and uh, take away with more information about edge and uh, green finance. Very much want to thank you our presenter for today, Tracy and Eleni. Thank you everyone and goodbye now. <laughs>